seguito spirituale di Golf Story. Golf Story, penso, vinse un Goti, anzi adesso vado a vedere Golf Story, Goti, vediamo se l'aveva vinto. Social Story is a game developed by Panic Bar and published by No More Robots. Ah, non l'aveva vinto. Social Story is also the spiritual sequel to Golf Story, an indie game that surprised both critics and audience in 2017. If you had the chance to play Golf Story back then, you should well know what to expect from Social Story. If you didn't play Golf Story, hurry up and get a digital copy as soon as possible because it's totally worth it and you might find it heavily discounted now. If you feel that I used the word story too much so far, you can grab a beer and take a sip each time I say it from now on. While playing a sequel, I generally look for some improvements compared to the previous titles. Improvements could rely on graphic, quantity and quality of contents, and a gameplay that keeps track of the flaws the first title had. Since Golf Story was flawless, I didn't know what to expect from such a story. Difficile, perché c'ha 3 F? Perché ha 3 F? Having loved Golf Story, I was so eager to play such a story that I completely went out of track. Eventually, even out of boundaries, and got soft locked after a couple of minutes into the game. But that's no risk for you, because developers quickly patched that bug, so it now runs safely. Social video games are bad. I can't even count the amount of casual players that only play that shit FIFA is and call themselves gamers. EA Sports, suck on this! But such a story is not just about social. It's a complete RPG that uses social as a background for the story and the setting. If you ever played Mario Tennis for the Game Boy Color, of course I did, you should know what I mean. You'll take control of your character, raise its parameters by completing side quests, meet friends along the way that will join your team and just then you'll be able to play social matches. And that does look to me like an RPG. Compared to Golf Story, Developers did a wonderful job by improving the 2D pixel graphics into a 3D version that still keeps the same style. The graphic is bright and well fits the cartoonish style of the environment. There's also a very smart option in the menu, allowing players to switch from a performance mode to a quality mode. So nobody will ever bother about the low FPS or the smooth pixels. It's all up to you. I do know many not critics and not gamers yelling at a title just for a few frame drops. Even Breath of the Wild for instance got criticized for this, so I can easily say that the developers saved their ass by adding this wise option. Okay, cartelle. The story in such a story is simple but yet entertaining. An evil company took control over Socher, copyrighted it and no one else in the world can kick a ball but them. This fictional lore is the base that serves for many jokes and fun dialogue in the game. The word Socher is banned, so characters will have to find new ways to mention it. Sometimes it's kickable, sometimes it's foot golf, and so on. Social story dialogue are thus well above the average. I'm the kind of guy that skips each and every line of text in a game, but this time I took the time to read as many as I could and they always presented me with a smile. I hardly laughed at the Athletic Retire and Toddler FC team. Atletico Pensionati e Lattanti FC in italiano. This is just the start. By proceeding through the game, you'll dive deep into a story where any NPC has a background and its characterization. The care developers took is beyond your imagination 
and it's something that AAA title do not offer since decades. The whole story takes place into a not so huge map. Just a few areas will be available from the start, while many more will be accessible later on. Despite the dimension, each and every step you take into such a story will let you discover a lot of hidden bonuses, power-ups and side quests. Your gameplay will be led by your curiosity and, will, and your will to 100% complete the game. Sticking just to the story will be hard and you will often derail from it towards some mini quests or challenges scattered in this cartoonish world. Challenges and side quests are all about soccer. Sometimes you have to score in an hidden goal. Sometimes you have to dribble your way in a timed run, kick your ball onto some nuts and then deliver them to a squirrel NPC. You never know what the game is going to ask you, but you can be sure that you'll have to kick your ball to solve puzzles properly. Sole luna. Capito, stella. Sole. <coughs> Genial. Did you notice I never talk about such a match so far? Well, that's it. Such a games are kinda rare and will always serve as a reward for completing some chapter of the story, just like boss battles do in other games. Instead, if you want to focus on playing such a you can just temporarily leave the story and choose to play a quick match from the screen title. Such matches have weird mechanics. I found out it's easier to score from the defense than from the attack line, for instance. It reminded me a lot of Ape Escape 2 minigame, Monkey Soccer, which I played for hours with my best friend. I'm not gonna waste any more time talking about graphics or musics, because that time they both me and you could spend playing such a story instead of watching commercials on YouTube. The unique flaw about such a story might be the longevity. While I haven't completed the game yet, I eventually will and that will be a sad moment. I do hope such a story is just the second chapter of a trilogy but there are no hints about that at this time. Such a story is available on every store but Stadia, the Atari Jaguar and the Virtual Boy, so go on and grab your digital copy for about 18 bucks. There's a 10% discount at this moment that you don't want to miss. Just to be clear, I do recommend this game and I will always recommend games born from smart ideas and deep care to details. Thank you for watching, this was Sib. Please leave a like and subscribe! Nel 7, nel 7, 10 secondi alla fine. Nonno capocannoniere.